Hi, this is Guru from gururides.com with part 1 of the C# Sharp series tutorial. The development of C# Sharp began under the name Project 42 in 1997 by Anders Helsberg. It was codenamed Project Cool. Cool stood for C like object oriented language. Later the name was changed to C sharp. Sharp is a musical note and that is where the inspiration came from. In the year 2002 it was finally released. Out of several .net languages in the .net framework, C sharp is the number one preference for developers. Let's look at a timeline of how C sharp evolved through these years. In the year 2002 The first release of C# Sharp by the version 1.0 was released. In 2005 came 2.0 framework. In 2008 came 3.0 version of C# Sharp. 4.0 was released in the year 2010. 5.0 came in the year 2013 and now we are working on C# Sharp 6.0 in the year 2015. when you intend to learn a new programming language the first thing that comes to your mind are two words hello world let's see how a hello world application looks like in c sharp we begin by using a namespace terminating with a semicolon at the top in our case we have used the system namespace prefixed by the using keyword ending with a terminator semicolon we can create our own namespace by using the namespace keyword here we mention namespace followed by the name of our namespace coders domain to mark the initialization of the namespace we begin with a flower bracket we also end the namespace with a flower bracket within the namespace we can consist and contain a lot of classes for now we have just one class hello world within a class we can have a lot of methods a class begin with a curly brace and closes with a curly brace we have our main method which acts as the starting point of our class from where our class begins and we outcome a message using console.write line called hello world to the end users console we close the class and we also close the namespace finally with a curly brace and that marks the end of this program a c# sharp class can be contained in a file with extension .cs where cs stands for c# sharp come let's launch visual studio the application development environment for developing c# sharp applications and projects for the web windows and mobile click on new project You can cancel this. I'll show you another way of doing that. Go to File, choose New Project. This opens up the same dialog we opened. We go to C Sharp. We have choice of other languages like Visual Basic, VC++, and so on, so forth. But we'll choose C Sharp for now. We'll choose the Windows template, console application, and give it a name. Hello world. We can click on the browse button to save our project files wherever we prefer. I'm saving them on my desktop. And we will click on okay to create our first console application. This is the solution explorer. within which we have our project and it is contained within a solution a solution can contain multiple projects to add one right click on the solution name choose add new project we can add any project for now i'm adding a console application called hello world 2 but we will add this later on in part 2 series cancel it for now and come back to the visual studio development environment within this 
project we have a class by the name program.cs like we said before a class has an extension of .cs which stands for C sharp this class also has a main method the main method acts as a starting point without this your program will simply not execute let's go to the tools options to reveal line numbers we go to the general within the general tab we move on to the text editor and we choose C sharp to the right hand side we can see line numbers checkbox we will check that and once you do that and click on OK within the text editor you can now see lines 1 to 16 on the left hand side I've done this so that I can be on the same page as you are and we do not get lost in this big huge beast called the development environment let's now go to the main method and write some application code console is the name of a class that is available in the system namespace console period or dot gives us an option in the drop down this drop down list that you see is called IntelliSense IntelliSense guides us while we code and gives us options to choose one here are two methods write and write line the difference is write simply displays a message to the end users console but right line not only displays a message but also takes you to the next line once the message is displayed we output the message hello world and there are 19 parameters of which we choose the 11th one which is a string we close the double quotes we close the parentheses and at the end you see a red wiggly line which is a warning from visual studio which says you're missing something yes we are missing the end of the line the compiler needs to know that the code ends here. We put a semicolon as the terminator to inform the compiler. Press the VCR button to run the application. The application runs for a moment and disappears. It actually showed us hello world but it disappeared. Because that is what you mentioned. You said console.write line hello world. It showed and disappeared. How about we go to the debug menu, choose start debugging from here, it again disappears. How about we go to debug and choose start without debugging, this time it works fine. Because when you choose start without debugging, it accepts an input from the end user and waits for your input. Until you input a key from the keyboard, it doesn't leave. As you can see hello world and then on the next line it says press any key to continue. When I press the key, it closes the window. I run again with Control F5, it works fine. If you do not want this behavior, then you'll have to come to the next line and write console.readkey. This way, read key is waiting to accept a key as input from the end user. So now if I just run start debugging or press F5 function key on the keyboard, it works fine. Unlike earlier, it wasn't working until we press control F5. To observe our output, we right click on the project name and in the shortcut menu we choose open folder in file explorer. We go to bin, debug and we see our executable which when we double click opens up the way we expect it to and displays the message hello world. This is the output that we need to share with the end users hello world.exe. If I go to the desktop and if I browse to my projects folder this is the solution file this is the project folder hello world in this we have the class that you wrote program.cs if you edit it shows you the code that you've written we close this we'll go to the bin folder we'll go to the debug folder and you can see the exe here if you run it you expect hello world to be displayed and on entering the key it disappears and closes the console application Now is it always important for us to use Visual Studio, this development environment, to code? No. We will copy this piece of code by selecting it with Ctrl A, Ctrl C. We'll go to the run prompt and type notepad. All we need to code is just a notepad. Paste all your code here that you copied from Visual Studio. And now we will just save this. In fact, we can even change a lot of things in here. For example, I'm changing the name of the class to hello world notepad we'll save the class file with the same name 
of course with the extension .cs. So when I say file save as, in the double quotes, put the name of the file with the extension .cs and save it on the desktop. Now without Visual Studio, how will we run this? Let's take a look at the file, right click and choose edit. This is the file we have and that is the only thing we have. When you install Visual Studio, you receive a C-Sharp compiler which is installed on your machine. You can access that by going to All Programs, Visual Studio 2015, Visual Studio Tools folder and in that you have Developer Command Prompt for Visual Studio. We'll use cd backslash for change directory to the root. We'll browse and traverse to the directory where our hello world.cs class right now is. It is on the desktop. Once we are at the desktop, then we'll use csc for c -sharp compiler and write hello world notepad.cs the name of the code file. This executes once you hit enter and compiles and creates into a byte code file. What is a byte code file? A byte code file is this which is hello world.exe. Once you execute this by writing hello world notepad.exe, it works as the way expected perfectly fine, isn't it? You can even double click on this application, it will execute the way it was supposed to work. It accepts an input, you can close it. We can in fact make this code even more granular and to the point. We can reduce a lot of things in this piece of code and without them our code will work perfectly fine. For example, what? There are a lot of namespaces which we are using at the top which are not in use as of now. We can remove them. We can in fact also remove our namespace because namespaces are optional. More about namespaces in part 3 of the c -sharp series tutorial. For now, this is my class name. This matches the name of my file name which is hello world notepad.cs. That is not important. The class name can be different than the file name. Unlike Java, this is possible in c -sharp. We will now go back to the command prompt and use the same code. We will write csc hello world notepad.cs and execute and see if it works. It works perfectly fine. Now we will try to execute the piece of code and you will see the same output as expected before. And when you run the application on the system on the desktop, hello world notepad.exe works perfectly fine as expected. So this is all you need to create your first console application. Let's wind up by watching what we've done so far for compiling your c -sharp file to a byte code file. You go to the developer command prompt and write csc hello world.cs. The outcome is a byte code file hello world.exe. We'll talk more about the byte code file in the later on sections following up in these C Sharp Hello World Tutorial Series. Thanks for your valuable time. If you feel you have learned something new today, please click on the like button below. If you have any queries or suggestions, kindly post them down in the comment section below.